Welcome to our lecture online and another outfall, another outcome of the Newton's laws of motion is again when we use the concept of the second law of motion if the net force on a, an object or a set of objects is equal to zero then there should not be an acceleration or vice versa if there's no acceleration then there's no net force so here we have a static situation we have a ceiling two strings coming down from the ceiling they're joined together over here from that joint there's another string coming down and a mass of two, two kilograms attached to that in such a way that the angles between the first and second string coming from the ceiling makes an angle of 45 degrees with the ceiling so now you're supposed to find the tension in those two strings find tension one and tension two but again the concept here is that if nothing is moving nothing's accelerating we can say that the sum of all the forces in the x-direction must add up to zero and the sum of all the forces in the y-direction must add, to, add up to zero. That's a simple result of Newton's second law that says, hey, if nothing's accelerating, there must be zero net force because we know that F net equals mass times acceleration. If acceleration is zero, the net force must be zero. Not the, not the forces. There could be forces. It simply means that when you add them all up, they add up to zero because there's no net force when there's zero acceleration. All right, keeping that in mind, now we need to find all the force in the x and the y direction. But notice that if we pick this point right here, that's a good point to pick, and we find out all the forces acting on that point, there are three forces. Let's draw them. We have tension number one, which is pulling in this direction. We have tension number two, which is pulling in this direction. And then we have, well, we call it tension three, pulling in a downward direction. Now notice that tension 3 is in the vertical direction, but tension 1 and 2 are not. They're off at an angle, so we have to find the x and y components of tension 1 and tension 2. So here we can draw the x and y component for tension 1. This is tension 1x, and this is tension 1y. And then using a different color, let's see here, maybe I'll use blue, I can draw the x and y components of tension 2. This is tension 2x and this is tension 2y. And of course, I can then find out what those are. And since this angle is 45 degrees, that means that this angle must be 45 degrees as well and this angle must be 45 degrees. Those are what we call alternate interior angles and they must be equal. That's a rule in geometry. We can say that T2x is equal to T2 times the cosine of theta and T2y is T2 times the sine of theta. And here, this is T1y, which is equal to T1 times the sine of theta, and T1x is equal to T1 times the cosine of the angle theta. Now, I have all the components, so I have three forces in the y direction, two components plus this force, and I have two components or two forces in the x direction. I can add them all up now, and they should add up to zero. So for the force in the x direction, I can say that the force to the right, which is positive, which is T2 cosine of theta minus T1 cosine of theta. That must add up to zero because those are all the forces in the x direction. And then we can say that this is equal to T1 in the y direction, which is T1 sine theta plus T2 sine theta minus tension 3, which is the weight of this object right here, which is mg. And that all has to add up to zero as well. So now what I have is I have two equations. So I have this equation right here and I have this equation right here and notice that I have only two unknowns. I have T1 and T2 as the unknowns. So the way you want to solve that now is use one of these equations and uh, four solve one of the tensions in terms of the other and then plug it into the second equation to find the each of the tensions. All right, so we'll take our first equation. This means that T2 cosine of theta is equal to T1 cosine of theta. And notice that it's cosine of the same angle, so we can go ahead and divide both sides by the cosine of theta, which means T1 equals T2. All right, so now we can go ahead and plug that into one of our equations here. So now we can say that 0 is equal to T1 times the sine of theta, plus instead of T2, I'm going to write T1 because they're equal. T1 times the sine of theta minus mg, and that adds up to zero. And now I can go ahead and solve that equation for T1. I can combine these two, so zero equals two 
T1 sine of theta minus mg. I can go ahead and take the mg to the other side, switch the equation around, so 2 times T1 sine of theta is equal to mg, and then I divide both sides by 2 times the sine of theta, which, when I come over here, gives me T1, which is equal to mg, divided by 2 times the sine of theta. Now I can go ahead and plug in all the numbers that I know. The mass uh, was 2 kilograms, so 2 kilograms. G is 9.8 meters per second squared, divided by 2 times the sine of 45 degrees. And with a calculator, we can figure out what that's equal to. So we have 19.6 divided by 2. Hmm, I could have simplified that and divide by the cosine or sine of 45, and that would be 13.9 newtons. So T1 is equal to 13.9 newtons. Of course, that means T2 is equal to 13.9 newtons. And I think I just answered my question. That's the answer to this problem. And that's how you do that. Now, of course, this was easy, relatively speaking, because the angles were the same. What do we do when the angles are not the same? Well, for that, you have to go and take a look at the next video.